Hello. In this video, I will be going over all the features of the firearms that are included in the Firearms Evolved Asset Pack. These firearms are intended to be used by the player character. So let's get right into it. Let's start off with very simple settings. So the damage just defines how much damage each projectile does. The fire rate defines how many bullets per second the weapon fires. The projectile count determines how many projectiles are shot with each shot. So if this is set to 1, then a weapon will function like a normal rifle. Every shot spawns one bullet. If we set this to 20, then with every shot, we spawn 20 bullets, 20 individual bullets. And each of these bullets will do 5 damage. Let's go to fire mode. So this determines the fire mode of the weapon. If it's set to semi-automatic, then even with a high fire rate, we always need to release the trigger and press it again for the weapon to fire. So with semi-automatic, if I hold it down, I will only shoot one shot. If I set it to full automatic, we can hold down the trigger and it will continuously fire until the magazine is empty. If this is set to burst fire, then every time we pull the trigger, the weapon will fire a burst of rounds. Right now it's set to three. And even if you hold, nothing happens. You have to release the trigger again and press it and then the weapon will do another burst. With this value down here, we can define how long one burst is. So if I set it to five, each burst, each pull of the trigger will fire five projectiles. The trace mode defines how the logic of the weapon works internally. So if it's set to hit scan, then every projectile is instantaneous. It's a line trace between the player camera and where you're aiming. And if there's a target in front of you, as we can see, the moment I, I shoot, we instantly deal damage, even as if it's very far away. You can see it's one line, the particle also changes. If we set it to projectile, then we will spawn an actual projectile that has a travel time. So we have a different particle, and if I shoot, You can see it takes a bit before the bullet arrives. We can tweak the speed of the projectiles, but we will go over that setting in a moment. For now, let's look at the headshot multiplier. So we have a damage of five and a multiplier of two, meaning if we land a headshot, we will do five times two damage. So 10. Body hit deals five, headshot deals 10. Next, let's go to the ammunition. So the reload time, uh, defines how many seconds it takes for a full reload of the weapon. If this is set to a lower or higher time than the animation takes, the animation will be sped up or slowed down. Next, we can go to the magazine size. So this is just how many bullets are in one magazine. Right now it's 10. You can see it at the bottom left. After t shooting 10 bullets, I need to reload the ammunition type. So with this setting, we can define what kind of ammunition our rifle uses. The reserves, um, so the bullets that are used to reload your weapon, are stored on the player character. So if I pick up two, two rifles, we can see that they actually share reserves. If I reload this, it goes to 240, but it also goes to 240 for my other rifle. Because they're of the same class, they use the same ammunition type. And the player only stores a certain number of rifle ammunition. Okay, so here we can set what kind of ammunition it uses. Auto reload, if we hit zero bullets in the magazine and chamber. If we try to shoot, we can hear the clicking sound. We are dry firing, nothing happens. But if we enable auto reload, now if the player tries to shoot again, they will reload the weapon. Okay. Um, next, carry over cartridges. What this means is that if we reload, right now we have 10 bullets and 250 rounds uh, as reserves. If we shoot and we reload, we can see that these bullets actually go back into our reserves, so we're not wasting them. If you disable this, then we are effectively wasting ammunition every time we reload with a non-empty magazine. So these five bullets are going to waste and I take another 10 bullets from the reserves. 
every time I reload. Doesn't matter how many bullets are left in my magazine. Staged reload. So if this is enabled, that means that the reload is split up into three phases. We have the part where we take the magazine out, we insert a new magazine, and then we cycle the action. So I can cancel the reload. Um, I will fire, I cancel the reload. Now we, we took out the magazine, but we didn't put a new one back in. And if I reload now, it just puts in the new magazine. Staged reloads, if this is enabled, it will also not cycle the action if there is already a bullet in the chamber. That shortens the reload time. So if I shoot, you can see we, we take out the magazine, we put a new one in. But if we empty our, our magazine entirely and we reload, you can see that we take out the magazine, we put a new one in, and it takes a bit of extra time to also cycle the action. Um, with this is because we had realistic chamber mode enabled. So there is an actual chamber that's simulated. This is why we, you also see right now we have 10, 10 bullets in our rifle. Now if I shoot and I reload, we will have 11 now, even though our magazine size is only 10. This is because there's already one bullet that's in the chamber and we put in a new magazine with 10, um, with a capacity of 10. So now we can fire the bullet that's currently in the chamber. And now we have 10 bullets still in the magazine. So we can shoot them. So if we empty this completely and we reload, I can see it only goes to 10 because there was no extra bullet in the chamber. Again, if there is a bullet in the chamber, this goes to 11. If stage reload is enabled, you can also observe that if you shoot, you reload. Now we took out the magazine. There is no magazine in the weapon, but we can still fire one shot because that shot is in the chamber right now. Now we're empty. We put in a new magazine, cycle the action, we're ready to fire again. If you do not want this behavior, then we can just disable this. And now there, there's no actual um, bullet that's in the chamber. So the reloads always do all three parts. You always take out the magazine, you put a new magazine in and you cycle the action. And even if you reload with a bullet put theoretically still in the chamber, it just doesn't do it. We always go back to the full capacity of 10. We don't go above it. This is just a video game logic used in most video games, but some realistic shooters do have a simulated chamber. Infinite ammo, if this is enabled, we can just shoot infinitely. Not using up any ammunition. This is more so to test your weapons. All right, let's go to the projectile. So the bullet speed, this setting only matters if you actually use a projectile. If you use a hitscan weapon, this doesn't matter at all. So this just defines how fast the bullets fly. It's in centimeters per second. If I set this to 50,000, then my projectiles will be much faster. Now if I set it to a lo low value, like a thousand, our projectiles will be very slow. Yes. Okay. Um, the maximum range defines when our bullets will actually despawn. So they don't fly infinitely, they despawn after a certain length. This applies to both the projectile and the hit scan. After 20,000 centimeters, our hit scan just ends, and if our projectiles fly for 20,000 centimeters, they will despawn. Now the accuracy. The accuracy of the weapon is defined in degrees, so if you set this to 5, the weapon will, still, will miss by 5 degrees. However, there is a weapon inaccuracy and there is a player inaccuracy. So if this is set to 0, if you pick up the weapon, we can see there is still some inaccuracy going on. But this inaccuracy is caused by the player character. So while the weapon is shooting like in a perfect straight line, our player isn't holding it like super tightly, we're jumping around. So if you crouch down, it becomes very accurate. And if you aim down sides, it's even more accurate. Now we, we have pretty much pinpoint precision. But if you don't do this and we stand up again and we walk around, our precision will not be that high. Um, so if the player accuracy, inaccuracy is five, and this is zero, then we will always miss by up to five degrees. If this is five as well, we will always miss by up to 10 degrees. So these are just added together. 
The more I increase this, if I set this to 10, we will have a super inaccurate weapon. Just spraying around. Next is the vertical and the horizontal recoil strength. So the recoil is procedural. It pushes the player camera up if you shoot. With the vertical recoil strength, so if you set this to 10, you can see with every shot, camera is pushed up. It automatically resets and if you hold down, you can see it, it brings us up very far. So if we, if we set this to zero, then there will be no recoil at all. Okay, so this is just a vertical recoil. Now if we set this to zero, this is the horizontal. If we set this to five, we can see that our weapon will sway left and right. While we shoot. Okay, so if you combine these, one and one is like uh, average reload, uh, average recoil for a fast firing weapon, like this. If your weapon is firing very slowly, it's recommended to increase this value, maybe five. So if you only fire like one shot with a sniper or shotgun, you want higher recoil. So this defines how much your weapon is pushed up with every single shot that you take. And next is the aim sway. So if this is set to a high value and we aim down sides, so we scope, a uh, player will have a very tough time actually aiming at the target because the weapon will start swaying around. Instead, if we set this to zero, if we now aim, it's steady, nothing's moving. We don't have any problems aiming at our target. Now there are two settings, the aim offset speed and the aim return speed. So the offset speed defines that with recoil how fast the weapon is pushed up. If this is instantaneous, it will look a bit choppy. If I set this to zero, it will be instantaneous. We can see. This doesn't look very good. It's very choppy. Uh, but if you set this too low, if you set this to like 10, then it feel it will feel very very smooth which we also don't want for a recoil in most cases so i recommend a value between 25 to 35 now if you shoot it's a bit more sudden and the aim return speed so that is how fast the weapon will reset itself we shoot, we can see that uh, it brings the camera back down. Uh, this mechanism is actually a bit more complex. So if we shoot, but the player um, counteracts this force, uh, if the player drags the weapon down while we are shooting, let's set this to some manageable recoil, uh, the system will actually compensate. So if we shoot, but the player drags the mouse down, and now we release, it will only bring us down to the height where we started at. So the, if the player quickly moves their weapon, so if we get up, it's resetting, but if the player moves the, their like camera around quickly, it also stops immediately. So it doesn't like keep bringing you down. Um, if I shoot, it resets, but then if I look somewhere else, it will stop immediately. So if it doesn't bring me down like completely, it's also, it's probably because I moved my like if I move it very fast here, it finds like a new starting point for the offset. So if I make this value very low, this means that if I shoot, it's very slow coming back down. And if I set this to a high value, then after we shoot, it will we have a very sudden return. So you can tweak this to your liking, whatever fits your game. Those are actually all the settings um, of the firearm. Of course, you can set a reload, fire, and dry fire montage. And then you can also for the UI. So you see at the bottom left, if I pick it up, it says rifle, and it shows the uh, rifle icon. So here I can swap it out. I can make it a pistol and call it cool rifle. And now if we pick it up, we can see it says cool rifle with a pistol icon. All right. That is all the settings. If you have any further questions, um, you can join the Discord server and ask them. I'm happy to help you out. 
Otherwise, read the online documentation. There's also a lot of information provided there. If you hover over any of these variables, there's also a description that will pop up. So that's it for now.